All right, here's something a little different. Um, <clears throat> this is my MEP804. You've seen me use it in past videos. Um, I'll take you off the camera tripod here. So I went to go uh, hook it up just to do a six month um, test. So I normally start it and run it for 30 minutes to an hour every three to six months just to test everything out. Uh, Cause this is basically a backup to a backup. Uh, so the reason I have this thing is in uh, 20, December 2016, we had uh, about an eight hour long power outage. And uh, basically the power outage, we ended up flooding the basement. Uh, we didn't have a backup generator at the time. Now we have that gener backup generator. But I wanna make sure that, that if absolutely necessary, uh, we have additional power. So I went out and bought this unit and I have the load bank on which I've, I've shown all that before. Uh, but I got it out the other day and it would not produce power. Now, a couple things to note here. Um, it comes on, it'll run and start and everything. The convenience receptacle produces 120 volts. The Hertz reads at 60 and the volts read at 208 or 120, depending on which one it is. The only problem is, is when you close the AC interrupter circuit, um, nothing happens. Uh, there's a brief flash right there, um, but nothing else happens. So I've already got this front cover pulled apart. I wanted to see if there were any, like a rat got in there, or my, mice got in there, chewed on the wires. I didn't see anything like that. Uh, same thing within here. So this is the main control panel. Uh, I looked in all here and everything. Uh, and obviously this is not a John Deere. Normally this is a John Deere focus channel, but I figure this is the reason I'm doing this video is to kind of show you some troubleshooting steps you can take. Um, now I think the key thing to think and to keep in mind is when you look at this, this looks like a complete and total disaster of wires and you're never gonna be able to figure it out. Um, I've taken probably five to six hours uh, of kind of Working my way through here, reading online, there's a forum online called Steel Soldiers. Um, they've got some great previous threads on there about, you know, um, things that might help solve this problem. I knew this unit worked. I mean, I've used it for probably 15 hours. Um, there are no faults indicated when it comes on. So I know that it's gotta be something that has changed, it's component that's either failed or something has changed since the last time I used it. Uh, it's been stored inside, so it shouldn't be weather related or anything like that. Uh, I went over the whole unit, I didn't see anything bad with wires. One thing I did notice while it was running is the relay right there, KT17, wasn't closing all the way. It was having some, it was kind of just sitting there and clicking and then nothing was happening. And so I was reading online, because everything is true online. Uh, there's like an 840 some odd page technical manual for these things if anybody's interested. But what you should be able to do is we're gonna turn it to run. So now it's acting like it's running. We're gonna go ahead and lift up the battle short switch. The battle short switch basically dictates that this unit will produce power ignoring everything on the panel. Uh, any, any of the fault indicators, it's gonna ignore everything. Um, but what you should hear when you close the circuit is you should hear a click, a click somewhere and you don't hear a click. So after doing a little bit of reading, the click you should hear is in this component right in here, which is the, uh, main contactor. Now, the nice thing is, I think... I can just kind of get in there and see if there's something wrong with it, if it's stuck or something like that. And if not, I'm gonna take it out of there and see if I can uh, diagnose anything with it. So I'm gonna work on that and uh, I'll come back and kind of show you what I might've gotten myself into. So evidently I've lost quite a bit of footage. I don't know how much, um, but this MEP is back together and, or where I'm working on putting it back together. It does work again. Um, and so the problem, and I, I grabbed a couple pictures with my phone and hopefully I've got a little bit of the video in there. Um, but to, to go over everything, basically it sat for a while, uh, and then I went to go use it and the, uh, AC circuit interrupter wouldn't come on. 
and it was either the switch or it was the circuit interrupter relay in here. What I ended up doing is actually pulling that relay out, taking it apart and uh, testing it. And there was no continuity on from B1 to B2 when I tested it uh, using 24 volts. So um, I'll try to put that picture in there. Hopefully I got a good picture of it. Um, and I was testing that with 24 volts. There was no continuity. Uh, and basically the, uh, the contactor was binding up in there. And so I cleaned up the edge of the contactor. It was kind of oxidized and cleaned up the edge of the contactor. And now uh, this MEP works just fine. I set, reassembled it and everything. And uh, we'll put it on the load bike tomorrow and uh, test it out. It's just a little, it's 11 degrees outside now. Uh, I did fire it up and it, it was quite smoky in here for a little bit. But uh, that is the problem. And I'll throw some pictures in here and, and uh, show you what the problem was. All right, so today's project is I need to finish reassembling this MEP, which will be, I don't know if it'll be in this video or I might just combine them all together. I need to get the 730 out of the way because I need to get the generator out of here so I can load test it uh, for the winter. And then I need to bring it back in here and I need to put it in this spot right here where it normally sits. I've had it out because I had to work on it. Um, so what I need to do first is I need to sit down with all of my little bolts there and I need to tighten everything down, get all the panels back on it. I had this top panel off because I was working on it and stuff. And so I need to do that. And then uh, probably while I'll do that, I'm going to open the door. I'm going to go ahead and start the 730, let it warm up, uh, let the 730 run for um, the whole time I'm doing it because, you know, I don't want it to get too cold. Um, out here right now in the back of the shop, I'd say it's in the mid 20s. Um, it got down to six last night at 1 a.m. and then it kind of headed up because we've got some winds from uh, the um, south. So let me uh, jump on the 730 real quick and see if I can get it started up. Got it all set up. Let's uh, see how she starts. I got you in out of the wind, or I got the camera in out of the wind. So let's go. Well, it says I need fuel. So let me do that. All right, five gallons of diesel fuel later, we should go. It'd be good. It's 
25 degrees outside. Got down to 10 last night. It was stored inside though. So let's see here. Winds died down a little bit. So we're cruising along at 60 hertz, thereabouts. We've got 108 or 120. And we got 208. We bump that up just a fuzz. I'm gonna let this warm up for a few minutes and then we'll start the test. 